Good morning. It's Monday Minute with Janice Picka. And I just wanted to give you like a little snapshot. My day probably looks very similar to your day starting out, maybe. Just listen to a portion of uh, the report about Osama bin Laden uh, being killed. And then I also read a report about more than 500 um, forced slave labor uh, victims uh, to a brick factory who've been released by the International Justice Mission. And then I read the devastation um, about the storms that have just hit last week. I mean, our own house uh, was pelted in our cars and we were out of power for a couple of days. Then thinking about where is God in all this? Where is God and how does God make a difference in our life? And I was watching a movie last night called The Rabbit Hole about a couple who had tragically lost their four-year-old son in an accident. And they had this real strange tension about what they called the God freaks in their support group. Um, and how uh, she said, she had this really poignant line in the movie. And she said that um, worship this sadistic God and he'll treat you like beep. And I thought that um, if we're not careful, we'll make up a notion about God that's completely altogether not true. And if we try to look at um, everything that's going on, the bad things, there are really, really bad things that's happening in our world, then we'll miss the goodness of God and His breath and His life moving through us. Because what we did this weekend was we went walking through and driving through the neighborhoods just in our, right, our immediate area right around us. And what we were astounded by was the mercy of God. Yes, there was damage. Yes, there was bad things that happened. But we kept noticing all these huge trees that if you saw the tree and you saw the house, the tree should have fallen straight on the house. But instead it fell to one side or this side or back on the road. All these places where people were spared and their families were spared and their property was spared. And I know that we were praying in the middle of the storm and we were huddled up in our hallway, as were you and lots of other Christians, just going, Lord, have mercy. And I know that sometimes, as soon as I get that out of my mouth, I think about the people in Alabama and Mississippi and where was God's mercy there. But the thing that I'm thinking about is we're not there and we don't know the stories. We don't know how God is showing up supernaturally in those places. Now, the point of all this is what? Is that you've just celebrated Easter. You just found out that Jesus has paid for every sin in the whole world. And you also found out that Jesus is out of the grave. He's not a good man that died um, for nothing. He's a good man, a perfect man that died so that we might have life. And that, that life means something. And I had this really fantastic conversation with Chuck this weekend. Um, he has a phrase from Dallas um, Willard that says, grace is not opposed to effort. Grace, God's grace, is not opposed to our effort. But we've been really examining the conversation about we think that God has his part and we have our part, and we got to do our part so that God will do his part. But actually, I think that there's something altogether different, is that our striving, our got to make it happen. we got to do it right. Oh, 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 we got to do it because God's not going to come through, and we got to have all these plan B, C, D, and through Z. And that really God's plan is our effort is leaning into his arms. Our effort is going, I don't know, this is really bad, but God. Our effort is looking at devastation, our effort is looking at our own hearts and going, but God, that he's alive and he's well and he's moving. He's working just like Jesus said. My father's working and I too am working. And that there is something happening in the world before our very eyes that we need Jesus more than ever. And we have Jesus, that his spirit is working and rescuing. And that instead of looking around, um, but that we'd look to the Lord, not in some like, uh, put your head in the sand, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I'm not going to look anything, but that you would proclaim the name of Jesus in the middle of these things because his name has power. And we were talking on mm, Saturday morning, and Chuck said, um, it doesn't matter, but we, this question came to my spirit, and we spent several minutes talking about it. Uh, from the Lord, um, can I trust you? The question from the Lord, God saying, can I trust you in your circumstances? In the circumstances that you're in today, can I trust you? And that doesn't mean, can I trust you to get it right? That means, can I trust you 
to see that I'm in the middle of these circumstances with you. And what prompted that conversation is, I only have two children, thank you Lord for two children, but I have friends who have three children, four children, seven children, and the two children that I have can be very, oh, how am I gonna do this? And I often stop and go, Lord, thank you that I don't have five or seven children. I don't know how I'd do it. And when I had that conversation, the Lord is like going, they needed me with seven, just like you need me with two. And it prompted the, this, this notion, the word from the Lord, can I trust you in the circumstances that I've given you today? And so I want to just ask that question of you. Are you trustworthy in the circumstances that you're in today without them all working out wonderfully? Are you trustworthy that you can continue to look for Jesus, look for his spirit, listen and respond that even though everything's crazy, the world seems like it's going crazy, that Jesus is alive and well and that we look to him, we live in him, He's living through us, and he truly is our hope. When Jesus said, the peace I give you is not as the world gives, he meant that, and it makes a difference, regardless of the good or the bad that comes to us and against us, that he has overcome death in every form, death of emotions, death of relationships, death of finances, physical death, death of dreams. He has overcome the death that would come against us. He is our life. Dwell on that today. And I'm going to say it again. Um, the time is ticking, ticking for Sweetly Broken. If you have any notion to come, you've got to sign up quickly because spaces are going and registration is getting ready to close. And Sweetly Broken is an offering for you women who need peace and healing from your abortion. Stop stalling. Um, it's easy to register and we are, our hearts are for you. So Lord bless you today. Let him be your peace. He's really all you need.